Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and on today's vlog, I will be discussing my top five genealogy TV shows. <music> Starting out at number five, Genealogy Roadshow. Genealogy Roadshow started in 2013 on PBS and is fairly similar in setup to Antiques Roadshow. In each episode, there are a lot of different people who are attending a conference in a certain city and they've sent ahead questions about their family history. Each episode is based around a city and those stories usually have to deal with that city or region. There are three co-hosts of the show, all of whom who are big names in the genealogy world, Joshua Taylor, Kenyatta Berry, and Mary Tedesco. There have only been three seasons of the show, and the last season aired in 2016. There haven't been any announcements about the show being canceled or it being continued, but in the summer of 2017, they did put out a call for casting for people who were looking to have their family stories on the show. Now, one nice thing about Genealogy Roadshow is it is fairly information-packed, and there are a lot of guests each episode. Each episode, you'll usually get three or four really big main stories, and then there are a lot of other smaller stories that they go over, so it really contains a lot of different information, and each story gives a really different view of that city or region. While we don't know what the future holds for Genealogy Roadshow, I'm hoping that they do continue. And now, coming in at number four, Relative Race. Now, Relative Race was started actually quite recently in 2016, and it airs on Brigham Young University Television. So you can actually just go to BYU TV and watch Relative Race for free. Of all the genealogy shows that I've seen, this is the only one that I know of that's set up like a competition. Each season features four different teams of two. Team Green, Team Black, Team Red, and Team Blue. Every team has to give up their smartphones or anything with GPS. They're not allowed GPS. And they are then given a flip phone, paper maps, and a car. Each episode is split up by the days, and the competition has 10 days to it, so each season is 10 episodes long. And in each episode, each team is given a name of a city that they must then drive to using the paper maps. And once they get to the city, they have to take a selfie in front of a city location. Once they take that city selfie, they're then given an address where they're going to find a challenge that they must complete. Once they complete the challenge, they're then given an address for their relative who lives in that city. They don't know who that relative is going to be, and once they get to that house, that's when the time stops. Now in the older seasons, when they got to the house of their relative, they would have to take a selfie with their relative, and that would stop their time. And I never really liked that, because I thought that's kind of awkward that you're running up to this house where these people are your relatives, and the first thing you got to do is, quick, quick, let's take a selfie. It's much better to be like, hi, I'm your so-and-so, and then the reaction, which I think they figured out eventually, because in the past few seasons, it seems that as soon as they get to their relative's house, that's when the time stops. Now, Relative Race is quite interesting because you have a wide variety of genealogy questions that are done. Each contestant does a DNA test, so sometimes you have relatives that are just DNA matches, then they don't even know how they're related to each other. They just know that maybe they share a certain amount of DNA, although it's never revealed in the show how much those matches are matching each other. But then you also get a lot of people where they're finding first cousins, second cousins, aunts, uncles, and then you also have a lot of people who are adoptees or people who have lost touch with entire sides of their family. So you get a lot of really emotional connections on the show. In each episode, you're getting four different scenarios of people meeting relatives that they've never met. Now, there have been five seasons of Relative Race so far, four of which that you can watch online. And the sixth season will actually be coming out at the end of this month, September 2019. 
So if you are really into relative race or if you've never seen it before, you can catch out a whole new season very soon. And now on to number three. Who do you think you are? U.S. Who do you think you are in the U.S. was started in 2010 on NBC. It was based off of the original, which aired in the United Kingdom. And each episode, it follows a different celebrity as they go through a journey to learn more about their family. Each episode often focuses on two or maybe three big stories within that family. And sometimes you'll get an episode where it's all about one story. There are a lot of different stories that are told through this series. You get a lot of people where they don't know much about their recent family, so their parents, their grandparents. And then there's also a lot of people who end up looking into their much more distant ancestry. And then there are celebrities that end up finding a much more deeper ancestry that they look into, such as going into their royal roots. One thing that I really enjoy about Who Do You Think You Are is that each celebrity, as they're going through their journey, they are going to the locations that their family were from. So it's not just them learning about it, but they're going to the actual land, they're going to the buildings, to the actual streets where their ancestors lived their lives, where different events happened in their lives. Now an interesting note about the US version is that it did start out on NBC, but NBC quickly took it out of their schedule and it was then taken up by TLC. And recently, they actually switched it back over to NBC. So starting in 2019 or 2020, the next season will actually be airing on NBC. And now to number two. Who do you think you are? United Kingdom. It's the longest running genealogy show that I know about that's still going today. It's currently in its 16th season, and once this video goes live, the last episode of the most recent season will have just released. The most recent episode actually deals with a lot of Sephardic genealogy, and David Mendoza, who works with Bevis Marks and is an amazing Sephardi genealogist, is actually on the show. I personally enjoy the UK version more than the US version, and I had a hard time deciding between whether or not I wanted the Australian version in the list as well. But one thing about the UK version is it seems the way that they present it just has a better flow to it in my own opinion. And on to the number one genealogy TV show, Finding Your Roots. Finding Your Roots started in 2012 on PBS, and it's a show that is hosted by Henry Louis Gates Jr., and each episode features usually about two or three different celebrities. The Finding Your Roots series is actually a continuation of previous programming through PBS, which was also done by Henry Louis Gates Jr. That includes the African American Lives and African American Lives 2 programs, as well as the Faces of America programming. Now those were set up a little bit differently than how Finding Your Roots is, but you'll find a very similar setup in terms of how they go through the genealogy and explain it to the guests. Each episode is structured in the same way where they first talk about the celebrity's childhood and their parents and grandparents, their really recent family history. And they'll usually go into a couple of different stories about the people that they knew and especially things that they might not have known about those people. From there, the episode usually continues on going back further through history, depending on the guest. Sometimes it can go back really far, and sometimes it'll only be more recent for the African-American guests and for the Jewish guests, where you often hit that brick wall sometime in the 1800s. Most of the Finding Your Roots episodes end where they just discuss the DNA results, but some episodes will feature the DNA heavily throughout the entire episode. Now, one of the things that I love the most about Finding Your Roots is that it seems to be the most information-packed of all of the series. It doesn't have a whole lot of fluff. They usually go right into the nitty-gritty about the family history and pulling up documents. And I really like the way they script the show so that as they go along with the information, it often goes in a similar path as to what their actual research did. So it's almost as if you're going along with the research instead of just being told the story of the family history. 
Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It's completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.